congratulations. Um, it is so wonderful to see this play on the big screen. I just loved it from beginning to end. And first, I just want to ask you um, about the origins. When you, you know, it was it, it was a long time in the making for you when you did actually write the musical. Um, what was it that stemmed it for you, and and where did it come from? I um, I had always. I'll try that again. Um, <laughs> I had uh, written a musical called Parade, and Parade was a very, very large piece, 35 actors in it, and a big orchestra, and very, you know, it was just huge, and everything about it was big. And, and it, that took me about five years to write, and so by the time I was done with it, the next thing I wanted to do, I really, I wanted to be very small and very contained, and so I just started with the idea of writing something that would be one man and one woman on stage with, you know, a little band and see what it was. Uh, and it was actually just that idea of a man and a woman that brought the story forward. And then the story, because I wasn't working from any material, ended up drawing from all sorts of things that were going on in my life at the time and my friends' lives. And I just started dragging everything into, into the pot to give these two people something to sing about. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lincoln Center uh, called me and they said, we want to commission a piece from you, what do you have in mind? And I said, well, it's funny, I have this idea about a man and a woman. And as I was talking to them, I said, and she goes backwards mm -hmm. and he goes forwards and they meet in the middle. And I hadn't really given it a lot of thought at that point, but they said, oh, that sounds great. And they gave me the commission, which now meant I had to write it. Uh, so that was really where it all started, uh, was just from that commission and, and that little idea. and. Um, we did it first in Chicago uh, at the Northlight Theater, with Little Theater in, in yep. Skokie. And then that got these rapturous, wonderful reviews, which I loved. It came to New York. And uh, when we were in New York, Sherry uh, Scott yep. did the, uh, played the role. And Sherry's husband, Kurt, uh, had founded a company with her that was a, a record label. And they wanted to make the record of, of the last five years. And so we made the deal with them. And about two years later, or maybe three, it could have been more than that, actually, uh, Kurt called me and he said, I think we should make a movie of the last five years. And I said, well, that's a nice idea, but who are you and how is that? You know? And he said, no, I think we can do it. I said, well, uh, listen, nobody else is asking me, so go ahead and try. And if, if you'd asked me at any point up until probably this afternoon, I would have said, they're never going to get the movie. <laughs> it's not gonna, I mean, it's just a, uh, and it's a, I consider it some sort of crazy miracle that the, there's a, a movie of this piece. It, it's a, it was certainly never what was in my mind. I, oh, I dream one day this will be a movie. But, yeah. you know, but I, I'm thrilled then that Richard really found out how to, how to bring it to life, how to make it work on screen and he did it in a way that's so sympathetic to the piece. Absolutely. Mm, beautiful. He so did. And what in the irony of the Bridges of Madison County tie in there. I mean, did you guys know each other from before? Or? Uh, no. The the story I think and Richard's better equipped to tell you than I am. The story is I think that Sherry met Richard in an audition and uh, and what Richard said, "Oh, I loved the last 5 years" cuz Sherry and, and Sherry said, "Oh, well, my husband and I were trying to make a movie out of it." And Richard said, I want to make that movie. And that's how that started. But I had never met Richard. The weirder part is that I have, in my house, I have maybe three screenplays uh, that I've ever had. And, and one of them is The Fisher King. Huh. And I've had it sitting there. And it is one of the most well-thumbed books in my entire library. I've always been a huge fan of Richard's work. So when Kurt called me and said, would you meet with Richard Legravenez? I said, of course I'd meet with Richard Legravenez. You know, that's what's, yeah, yeah, you know. I'd, but who's actually going to write and direct the movie. I mean, I'll meet with Richard, but then there's going to be some kid in college who you're going to introduce me to who's going to really do it. He said, no, Richard really wants to do Amazing. it. Amazing. So that was that. Yeah, you couldn't get a more sensitive director, 100%. No, no, wow. I mean, and, and musical and, yeah. and so attuned to what the characters are feeling, you know. Okay, I have to ask you. Where, where does your brilliance come from? Because, my God, you know, you, we can listen to the music that you write and not even have any words, and we can still get a story from it. You're just unfreaking believable. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I, I think anybody who's an artist, who really is one, as opposed to the people who just call themselves one. But I mean, I, and I, I, well, maybe I'm just one of those. But I think that I really care about the art, and the art for me when I know it's real art, when I know it's a real thing, is when it doesn't live in the land of the certain, but it lives in the land of somewhere between what is definite and what is unsure. And trying to, trying to navigate the bounds of what is 
obvious or what is clear or what everybody says and the thing that maybe people think underneath that or it, it, that's that's all of my work and you can understand that if I talk about it on a a plot level or on a verbal level, but I also mean it on a musical level. There are things that just sound like this is what's supposed to happen and this chord goes to that one, and I think most pop music sort of does that. And for me, musically, it's if you know it's supposed to do that, then my job is to ask the question, why do we know that? Mm. What else could it be? And I find that when you ask those questions, I find that when I ask those questions, the emotional life sort of blossoms, you know, I, I start to feel things that I can't articulate, that's the whole point of writing music, is to be able to, to write things that you can't articulate, but I think that the essential ambivalence, the essential ambiguousness of, of our lives uh, is able to come out in the music that I write if I'm, you know, if I'm doing it right. Yeah, you, you obviously had great Broadway actors doing the show and on stage, um, and, and you had a hand in, in uh, you know, choosing Anna and Jeremy. Sure. At the end, they were fantastic together, and I mean, we know Anna, she's got that background, and now Jeremy, too, has done Broadway and mm -hmm. stuff, but wow, uh, he, he really surprised me in this movie. He's fantastic. I actually didn't know Jeremy. I had, uh, I was living out in Los Angeles until just, uh, just this year, and so uh, I hadn't seen Newsies, I hadn't seen Bonnie and Clyde, and everyone was telling me about Jeremy Jordan, but I didn't know who he was. So when, uh, when his name came up for the movie, I said, well, I, I guess I just have to see him. And everyone said, oh, you'll love him, you'll love him. I said, okay, but I just have to see him. Mm -hmm. And so I could never get in a room with him at the same time. And so finally they delivered me this whole package of videotapes of Jeremy Jordan. You know, they said, look, this is it. And I just watched them over and over again because he was so compelling and he was so deep inside the material. And he was just a, a beautiful, beautiful singer and yeah. a, a really a very connected actor. I was very, I was really impressed with how precise he was. Yeah, he delivered the sto like the storyline so well. But my my favorite was uh, Shmuel. Like I love that scene and just the way it progresses and how he told the well, story. And, it. Oh. and Shmuel was a big thing. <sighs> Richard, when we first met, Richard said he didn't know what to do with Shmuel, which I understood because it is in a lot of ways. Uh, the most theatrical of all of the tricks in the show, and uh, and he said, I, it, should it be animated? And maybe he mm. should tell the story. And, and and we, you know, we bounced that around. And he said, but I don't want to do that, and I don't know what it is. And he was trying to talk to, should I cut it? And what if I cut like a big chunk out of it, and so it's a lot shorter? And I said, listen, it does work, and it will work in the movie. So all I'm saying to you is, you just have to trust that you will figure out how to make it work. And that's the only permission I'm giving you is. <laughs> It will work. You'll make it work because it does, and uh, and then he cursed me out and went off to try and figure it out. And there were a lot of very high concept versions of it. And then he said to me one morning, like, and I think it was about a week before they shot it. He said, "I got it. I 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 can't believe I couldn't figure it out until now." <laughs> and it was just Jeremy telling a story That's in great. an apartment, but it was and it and it staged so beautifully. Richard did such a great job of, of staging it and, and having the two of them interact. It was really, I, and it's, it, it's for some reason, it's the sexiest version of Shmuel it's I've ever fantastic. seen. It's really nice. It just nice. really <laughs> stayed with me. Um, okay, so, you know, there's so many people who write beautiful music or write great lyrics or whatever it is. What's your advice? Like, how do you become a Tony Award winning writer for Broadway, how, how, like what's your secret? How, oh, what are you, what's your I, advice to somebody who wants to go I and have, do this? I have no advice, I have no secret. I don't, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't recommend it as a path. It's impossible. <laughs> what I do is essentially impossible. I don't think it's a good idea. So let me be on record as saying, don't do it. Because <laughs> the only people who can do what I do are the people who aren't going to listen to me when I say don't do it. If you're a reasonable enough, rational enough human being to to know what the obstacles are, you would never do this. It's insane. It's a stupid, stupid job. So given that I'm now saying to you, it's impossible and it's ridiculous, the only reason to do it, therefore, is because there's nothing else and there was never anything else I could do. And I've tried. I've tried even while I'm in the middle of this. I tried to be a teacher and I tried to write novels and I tried to write symphonies and I tried to, you know, anything that was not writing Broadway musicals, which is a stupid, impossible, <laughs> ridiculous job. And uh, unfortunately, there's no way out and I'm, I'm stuck in it and I happen to love it which is also my misfortune but that's there's no advice to it you do it because it is the thing that you burn most in the world to do and you hope that someone somewhere thinks you're good enough at it to give you a chance well please be, keep, you know keeping stupid and keep doing it because <laughs> honestly I am such a Broadway freak that whenever I can fly to New York and get yeah you know, that's the first thing I do and your stuff is just just 
phenomenal and just you well, so deserve all of your success and well, thank you so much. honestly you're just fantastic and i really appreciate you giving us the time today and mm, my uh, pleasure best of luck with this and thank you what's the next one you're going to do well uh, well there's two th there's honeymoon in vegas yes. opens on broadway uh we start performances in november we open in january and right now we're prepping the movie of 13. Yeah. so i get to keep my feet in this world which is fun because you people are all very nice to me oh well we're happy <laughs> to be nice to you and it's not bs we mean it thank you so much for your time thank i so you, appreciate it